First and foremost, I'd like to give all praise, honor, and glory to Yahweh. By Hashem Yahweh Shai, by Hashem Rokah Kodash. Double honors to the apostles and the elders of Great Millstone that rule well. And a sincere salutation to all you Akim and you Akwat that believe in all sincerity. So as you see here, the title of this video, Hebrew Israelites, the Book of Mormon is not for you. And this video was done by the elder Manata Zakba out of uh, GMS, South Carolina. And it, as you can see on the lower right hand corner, his uh, YouTube page, go ahead and check this video out. Okay, it's very edifying. And, um, you know, if the spirit allows, I would like to skillfully add to this brother's, um, you know, video. Okay, and um, I agree. The Book of Mormon is not for you, okay? There is a lie being taught, okay, in the LDS church, okay, that um, basically uh, black skin is a curse, okay? And, um, you know, they have changed their stance as of late, okay? But, um, yeah, the Book of Mormon is not for you, you know? And before I came into the truth, I was actually LDS or Mormon, okay? So this, um, you know has been something that, um, you know, out there on the highways and hedges, I have fought vehemently against, you know, I renounced this teaching because it is false. All right. But, um, let's start with a scripture. <clears throat> okay. We'll get this book of, um, uh, Isaiah 34 and 16. Seek ye out of the book of the Lord and read no one of these shall fail, none shall want her mate, for my mouth it hath commanded, and his spirit it hath gathered them. Okay? So you're supposed to seek out of the book of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai and read, which is the Bible, along with the Apocrypha. The Apocrypha is part of the Bible. Okay? No one of these shall fail, none of the prophecies shall fail, none shall want her mate. Okay? So you're not going to mate the Bible with another book. Okay? And some say that the Apocrypha, that we make the Apocrypha with the Bible, and that's not true. The Apocrypha is actually a part of the Bible, all right? Strong's H, 7468, Reuth, Reuth. Okay, it says female companion, mate, neighbor, woman, okay? So, you know, the Bible's not going to need, as it says here, Let's see. It's not going to need a, a companion, all right? And, and a lot of Mormons uh, basically, um, so like I got to, you know, they have their, uh, their Bible and their Book of Mormon together, okay? As if, as if, you know, they went together, which they don't, okay? Because I'm going to go into the history, <clears throat> okay, and break down. Um, some uh, some genealogy, if you will, okay, if that's the word, all right. But um, yeah, seek out of the book of Yahweh Bashim Yahshai and read, okay. These prophecies are not going to fail, and they're not going to need a mate. You see, the Lord has commanded, okay. You know, uh, the prophets to speak, okay, and you know, basically, um, you know. The uh, the prophets, okay, the, you know it was it was actually scribed, you know what the prophets had said, okay, so. You know, I, I want to go into uh. Uh, let's see. We'll start here, okay. We'll start here. We'll, we'll get the book of uh. Let's see. We'll get this out of the book of mormon this is alma chapter 10 verse 3 <clears throat> now follow me okay it says and Aminadi was a descendant of nephi who was the son of lehi who came out of the land of jerusalem who was a descendant of manasseh who was the son of joseph who was sold into egypt by the hands of his brethren okay so they're claiming that joseph who was sold into egypt Okay, by the hands of his brothers, okay, was the uh, the forefather of Nephi. Okay, so they're basically saying that uh, you know Joseph had Manasseh, Manasseh had Lehi, and Lehi had Nephi. Okay, 
right? Alma chapter 10, verse 3, right? Let's get in first Nephi chapter 5, okay? Let's see. I don't know. I had to write this down. First Nephi chapter 5, and we'll start at 14. And it came to pass that my father Lehi also found upon the plates of brass a genealogy of his fathers. Okay? This is Nephi speaking of his father Lehi, who was supposedly a descendant of Manasseh, who Manasseh was the descendant of who? Joseph, who was sold into slavery by his brothers. Okay? So follow me. Okay. And it came to pass that my father Lehi also found upon the brass plates a genealogy of his fathers. Wherefore, he knew that he was a descendant of Joseph. Yea, even that Joseph, who was the son of Jacob, who was sold into Egypt <clears throat> and who was preserved by the hand of the Lord, that he might preserve his father Jacob and all his household from perishing with famine. Okay. So again. Uh, uh, they're claiming, okay, descendancy all the way back to Jacob, all right? But, uh, you know, real quick, something that I find very interesting is how it says, and it came to pass that my father, Lehi, okay? So, Nephi is supposed to be writing this Book of Mormon, okay? Because he's speaking about his father, all right? Now, Let's get this. This is John 7 and 17. It says, if any man will do his will, he shall know of the doctrine, whether it be of the most high or whether I speak of myself. Okay. He's speaking of his self. Him and his father. Okay. Nephi isn't Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai. Right. Neither did any of the prophets in the Bible speak about their fathers directly. All right. And as a matter of fact, when you go to first Nephi, the first chapter, the first verse, it says, I, Nephi, having been born of goodly parents, therefore, I was taught somewhat in all the learning of my father and having seen many afflictions in the course of my days. Yada, da, yada, da, yada, da. OK. So he's speaking of himself, right? It says John 7 and 17. If any man will do his will, he shall know of the doctrine, whether it be of the most high or whether I speak of myself. Okay? So if you know the doctrine of the most high, you're going to know, okay, through the spirit, if the teaching is of, uh, of, of Yahweh Bashim Yahushai or is it of a man and he's speaking of himself. Okay? It says, he that speaketh of himself seeketh his own glory, but he that seeketh his glory that sent him, the same is true, and no unrighteousness is in him. Okay? So basically, this book is, you know, they're, they're, they're seeking their own glory. They're pushing a narrative of white supremacy. Okay? And we're going to go into it. Now, <clears throat> going back into this second Nephi chapter 5. All right? No. No, 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 no. Let's see. First... Nephi 5. Whoops. I lost it. Let's pull it up again. First Nephi 5. Because supposedly this Nephi character, which he didn't never existed. All right. He's never written in the in the Bible, which, you know, Mormons think that the Book of Mormon goes with the Bible, but it doesn't. Okay, he's never mentioned in the Bible. You see? So this is a first Nephi chapter five. We'll go back because they're claiming ancestry all the way back to our forefather Jacob, whose name was changed to Israel, right? And from Jacob came the twelve tribes. You see? We'll read this again. First Nephi five and fourteen. And it came to pass that my father, right? He's seeking his own glory, not of Yahweh Bashem Yahushai. This doctrine is not of the Lord. It it is their doctrine. Okay, it's a cleverly cleverly devised fable. Okay, and it came to pass that my father Lehi also found upon the plates of brass a genealogy of his fathers, wherefore he knew that he was a descendant of Joseph. Yea, even that Joseph, who was the son of Jacob, who was sold into Egypt, and who was preserved by the hand of the Lord, that he might preserve his father Jacob and all his household from perishing with famine. And they were also led out of captivity and out of the land of Egypt by the same God who had preserved them. 
And thus my father Lehi did discover the genealogy of his fathers. And Laban also was a descendant of Joseph, wherefore he and his fathers had kept the records. Okay, so it says here, and thus my father Lehi had discovered his genealogy. Okay, but all through the scriptures, there's genealogy. Okay, Yahweh Shai in Matthew, the first chapter, it shows his genealogy. Okay, by his fathers. So how is it that Lehi, his father, Nephi's father from the Book of Mormon, discovered the genealogy in these uh, plates of brass? Okay, that's interesting how his father didn't even know his genealogy. He discovered the genealogy of his fathers, right? Interesting, right? So I looked up the brass plates and it says here, the brass plates were a set of plates retrieved by Nephi at the direction of his father, Lehi. They contain Jewish records similar to the Old Testament up to the time of Jeremiah. The large plates of Nephi, which are the source of the text abridged by Mormon and engraved on the golden plates. So that tells you what they are. They were retrieved by Nephi at the direction of his father. Okay, his father tells him to go back to Jerusalem to retrieve these, these plates of brass, which, I mean, where are they at? You know what I mean? I, I've never seen them. I've never heard anybody that has seen them. Let's Google where are they at real quick. Okay. Because they're claiming ancestry all the way back to Jerusalem. It says... You know what? Basically, the blast plates ain't never been mentioned with the Bible, okay? So, you know, who knows where they're at, all right? But uh, let's, let's get back because, as we said here, okay, or as they say here, I should say, Lehi, which is Nehi's father, is a descendant of Joseph. Yea, even that Joseph, who was the son of Jacob, who was sold into Egypt. Okay, keep that in mind. Keep that in mind. Nephi is saying that Lehi, okay, is a descendant of Manasseh, who Manasseh obviously was a son of Joseph. Okay, now let's get that. Let's get that. Okay. Okay. Genesis 41. Okay. And we'll get uh we'll start at 40, okay? Thou shalt be over my house, okay? And this is uh this is Pharaoh. You know what? I'll start at 38. And Pharaoh said unto his servants, "Can we find such as one such a one as this, a man in whom the spirit of the most high is?" And Pharaoh said unto Joseph, For as much as the Most High has shewed thee all this, there is none so discreet and wise as thou art. You see? So he was discreet and wise. He knew how to carry himself. Okay, Joseph. You see? One of the uh, the sons of Jacob. Okay? Okay, the, foref the, the forefather of the Israelites. All right? Joseph. All right? He was... Uh, Esteemed by Pharaoh. Now let's continue reading. It says 41. And Pharaoh said unto Joseph. No, 39. And Pharaoh said unto Joseph. For as much as the Most High has shewed thee all this. There is con, none so discreet and wise as thou art. Thou shalt be over my house. And according unto thy word shall all my people be ruled. Only in the throne will I be greater than thou. You see? So basically Joseph was like the... Uh, the right hand man of Pharaoh, you know, he was like the second in command. According to Joseph's word, well, the, what would the Egyptians be be ruled? You see, okay, forty one. And Pharaoh said unto Joseph, "See, I have set thee over all the land of Egypt." Okay. 
Now, I want to jump down. Okay, no, you know what? Let me keep reading. And Pharaoh took off his ring from his hand and put it upon Joseph's hand and arrayed him in vestures of fine linen and put a gold chain about his neck. And he made him to ride in the second chariot which he had. And they cried before him, bow the knee. And he made him ruler over all the land of Egypt. And Pharaoh said unto Joseph, I am Pharaoh, and without thee shall no man lift up his hand or foot in all the land of Egypt. And Pharaoh called Joseph's name Zaph, Zaphna, Zaphnath Panea. And he gave him to wife Asenath, the daughter of Potiphar, priest of On. And Joseph went out over all the land of Egypt. Okay. Are you following me? Are you following me? Professor Grim voice. It says, um, so Pharaoh called Joseph's name uh, Zaphnath Panea. And he gave him to wife Asenath, the daughter of Potiphar, priest of On. Okay. That's the point. Okay. Joseph was given Asenath, the daughter of Potiphar, priest of On. All right. Now let's 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 read upon him. Let's see. Let's read. I had it pulled up right here. Okay. Who were the priest of On? Okay. It says in Genesis 41, we read that Joseph married the daughter of the priest of On. Verse 45 says, Pharaoh gave Joseph Asenath, daughter of Potiphar, priest of On, to be his wife. The priest of On led the worship of the Egyptian sun god. Joseph's marriage to his daughter seems to go against the Old Testament directive not to intermarry with pagans. Was Joseph sinfully embracing Egyptian culture or is there more to the story? Here are some considerations. First, it is clear that Joseph was a godly man and full of faith. He was not hesitant to give glory to the Most High in Pharaoh's presence, and Pharaoh recognized the power of the Most High in Joseph. Given Joseph's staunch, lifelong commitment to do what was right, it is unlikely that he would accept a sinful union to a pagan wife. There must be more to the story. Second, Joseph was given his wife by Pharaoh. Joseph had just interpreted a prophetic dream of Pharaoh and the king responded by honoring Joseph with the high ranking office in Egypt and placing him in charge of preparing for a future famine. Joseph's rewards included a new position, a new Egyptian name and an Egyptian wife from high from a high profile family. The marriage of the daughter of the priest of On to a foreigner just out of prison was in all likelihood shocking to the Egyptian people. You see, Let's run that back. The marriage of the daughter of the priest of On to a foreigner just out of prison was in all was in all likelihood shocking to the Egyptian people. But the marriage cemented Joseph's place in Egyptian society and removed all doubt as to Pharaoh's approval of him. Third, the Most High permitted Joseph to take this wife. Scripture says nothing negative about the marriage to Asenath, even though she was a daughter of the priest of On through Asenath. Joseph had two sons, Manasseh and Ephraim, okay? Manasseh and Ephraim, who became the ancestors of two tribes in Israel. It could be that Asenath embraced the Most High of Israel, who had ble so blessed Joseph. It could, and I'm going to stop there, okay? I'm going to stop there. But Joseph had two sons by this woman, Asenath, Manasseh and Ephraim, who became the ancestors of the two tribes of two tribes in Israel. Right now. Let's read that in the scriptures, because that is. Uh, Genesis 41 and 50. And unto Joseph were born two sons before the years of famine came, which Asenath, the daughter of Potiphar, a priest of On, bare unto him. You see, Joseph uh had two uh sons with Asenath, Ephraim and Manasseh. Okay? So Joseph married an Egyptian woman, right? Do we have to bring out images of what the Egyptians look like and the color of their skin? Okay? I don't think so. Anyone who knows history knows that the Egyptians, okay, were dark skill uh colored people okay you know so let's read okay about when joseph was called let's see jo uh, genesis 41 and 14 
it says, then, then Pharaoh sent and called Joseph and they brought him hastily out of the dungeon. And he shaved himself and changed his raiment and came in unto Pharaoh. You see? So he shaved himself and changed his raiment. Okay? So that was an Egyptian custom. He shaved himself. The Egyptians were known to shave themselves. Okay? Look, look at the mummy. Look at uh, 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 the Ten Commandments. You see Ramses with his head shaved. Okay? The, 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 you know this was the custom so basically you know joseph was was um he obviously he was a hebrew okay the hebrews were dark skin colored people okay and um you know basically uh um you know he he basically you know after being sold into the uh the hands of the egyptians basically took on their culture okay he became the second in command i mean he he was in there okay he was all in the society Okay, he wore their raiment and he came in unto Pharaoh. You see? Okay, so let's let's read Genesis forty two and three. Uh eight. And Joseph knew his brethren, but they knew him not. They, but they knew not him. Okay, as the top says, jo Joseph's brother sent to Egypt, because um, Jacob saw that there was corn in Egypt. Jacob said unto his sons, "Why do ye look upon another? You know, basically go go to Egypt and go buy corn. Okay, that we may live and not die." So the brothers go to um, Egypt and they see Joseph because they had sold him into Joseph prior. Okay, so. It says, and Joseph knew his brethren, but they knew, but they knew not him. So he was, he was all Egyptian now. All right. And basically what I'm getting to is that he was basically, uh, you know, ruling. Okay. Over the Egyptians. He shaved his head. He looked like the Egyptians. He married an Egyptian wife and he had two sons. Okay. So these were dark uh, skin colored people. So why would the Nephites say this? Okay, let's see. Before I get that, I want to get one more scripture before I get that. Further solidifying my point, uh, just Genesis 42 and 23. And they knew not that Joseph understood them, for he spake unto them by an interpreter. So he was even speaking through to his brothers by an interpreter. So he was he was acting like he was a, a, an Egyptian, but he knew who they were. OK, so the history speaks for itself. OK, uh, Joseph was not. Uh, 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 you know, he, he, they were not white. OK, they, they were so-called Negroes, man. They were dark skinned uh, Israelites. OK, <clears throat> let's get another one. This is Genesis 25 and 25. And the first came out red all over like a hairy garment. And they called his name Esau. And after that came out his brother and his hand took hold on Esau's heel. And his name was called Jacob. And Isaac was three score, three score years old when she bare them. Okay. So Esau came out red all over like a hairy garment. Okay. Meaning the blood shoot forth through his skin. You see, so Esau came out wasted away. He didn't come with pig with pigment. Okay, let's see. There's a, there's a scripture. Let's see where it says Jacob. Okay, it's in that. Yeah, it's in that same chapter. Okay. <clears throat> 27 and the boys grew and Esau was a cunning hunter a man of the field and Jacob was a plain man dwelling in tents you see Jacob was a plain man okay let's get this word plain Strong's H 8535 Tom Tom 
one who lacks nothing in physical strength, beauty, etc. Sound, wholesome, an ordinary, quiet sort of person, complete, moral, morally innocent, having integrity. Okay. But Esau came out red like a hairy garment. So he was hairy. Okay. And, and, and he, he lacked pigment. Okay. He was like an albino, if you will. You see. So Jacob was a plain man. Okay, he was a man of color. We know this to the scriptures. We know this to the spirit and prayer. We know this to be evident. And we've went time and time again through these scriptures left and left and right. But, you know, ultimately, you know, if it's not meant for you to get it, you're not going to receive it. You see, but Jacob was a plain man. Okay, Adam, was he now formed from the ground? What color is the ground? Okay, it's different shades of brown. You see, so... Let's get this. This is 2 Nephi, chapter 5. Let's see. Where is it? And 19. This is what they say in their book. And behold, the words of the Lord had been fulfilled unto my brethren, which he spake concerning them, that I should be their ruler and their teacher. Wherefore, I had been their ruler and their teacher, according to the commandments of the Lord, until the time they sought to take away my life. Wherefore, the word of the Lord was fulfilled, which he spake unto me, saying that inasmuch as they will not hearken unto thy words, they shall be cut off from the presence of the Lord. And behold, they were cut off from his presence. And he had caused a cursing to come upon them, yea, even a sore cursing because of their iniquity. For behold, they had hardened their hearts against him, that they had become like unto a flint. Wherefore, as they were white and exceedingly fair and delightsome, that they may that they might not be enticing unto my people, the Lord power did cause a skin of blackness to come upon them. You see that? So the Book of Mormon, okay, according to Nephi, okay, and ne Nephi had four brothers, Laman, Lemuel, Nephi, and Sam, okay? And according to Second Nephi chapter 5 and 21, a cursing came upon Laman and Lemuel. Okay, the two older brothers, because they tried to kill Nephi, which he was supposed to rule over them, right? And uh, the story goes that, you know, basically um, they, they were cursed, okay? And a sore cursing because of their iniquity. For behold, they had hardened their hearts against him, that they had become like unto a flint. Wherefore, as they were white, so Laman and Lemuel, Nephi and Sam were white. But it's interesting that the Bible paints another narrative, Okay, there's another story. Okay, the scriptures don't say this. Okay, the scriptures say that 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 uh you know Jacob was a plain man. Okay, and Jacob, you know, he had uh, Joseph. Joseph had Ephraim and Manasseh. Okay, and, and from a, from a, a Egyptian woman, right? He even was mistaken for an Egyptian, and Egyptians are what. Dark skin colored people. That's facts. That's history. We don't got to go and pull up pictures. Okay. But some people do. They need to see it. But no. Okay. He was mistaken by his brothers for an Egyptian. He even spoke to them through an interpreter. But he knew who they were. But he had changed so much since he was sold into slavery by his brothers. Okay. That they thought he was an Egyptian. But he feigned. He knew who they were as the story goes. Read your history, man. Jacob was a plain man, okay? So were his sons. They were of color. They were even mistaken. Paul was mistaken as an Egyptian, okay? And if I'm not mistaken, Moses, if I'm not mistaken, that's my point. And I went through all that to get to this point. When did Nephi's brothers, when were they white? Seen as... Their ancestors, okay, were dark skin colored people. Okay, let me rephrase that. Uh, Joseph was mistaken for an Egyptian by his brothers. He was bald, his raiment was different, he was the second to rule, okay, other than Pharaoh. He had an Egyptian wife. Okay, the Egyptians were known dark skin colored people, even darker than Negroes. Okay, and he had two sons, Ephraim and Manasseh. Lehi, which is the son of Nephi, claimed lineage all the way back to Jacob. When 
were they white? Wherefore, as they were white and exceedingly fair and delightsome, that they might not be enticing unto my people, right? So I guess, you know, well, let me read it. That they might not be enticing unto my people. The Lord God did cause a skin of blackness to come upon them. You see that? So a skin of blackness, according to the, to, you know, the Book of Mormon, is not enticing. It's not delightsome unto who? White people. You see that? That's in their book. And thus saith the Lord God, I will cause that they shall be loathsome unto thy people, save they shall repent of their iniquities. And cursed shall be the seed of him that mixeth with their seed, for they shall be cursed even with the same cursing. And the Lord spake it, and it was done. And because of their cursing which was upon them, they did become an idle people. Idle means what? It means lazy, right? So yeah, okay, I'm trying to get it. I'm trying to look up this word. Let's look it up, man. Let's look it up, man. Why not? See, racism in the Book of Mormon, man. And they say they were racist. Idle. Of, of a person avoiding work, lazy, without purpose or uh, effect, pointless, spending time doing nothing. Wait a minute. 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 Let's get this. Jacob, man of tent. Snap. Okay. Let's see, Jacob, wait. Shoot. Hope you, hope you know you're following me through the spirit and power of Yahweh Man of the tent. Let's get that real quick. Genesis 25, say, oh, okay, well, it's in the same. Genesis 25 and 27, it says, And the boys grew, and Esau was a cunning hunter, a man of the field, and Jacob was a plain man dwelling in tents. <laughs> okay? Let's see this word, dwelling. Strong's 8, 34, 27. Yashav. <laughs> Yashav. It says to dwell. Remain, sit, abide, to sit, sit down, to be set, to remain, stay, to dwell, have one's abode, to be inhabited, to set place, to cause, to sit, to cause, to abide, sit, to cause, to dwell, okay, to cause cities to be inhabited, right? So he was chilling, all right? <laughs> so Esau's basically saying that we're lazy, okay? Jake is lazy is what they're saying. Right? That's what they're saying. Okay? Okay? It says, And because of their cursing, which was upon them, they did become an idle people. <laughs> wow. So they're basically saying that Jake is lazy. Right? But that's the spirit of Jacob to dwell in tents. Esau want to be out in the field. Okay? Like a savage. All right, killing killing the uh, uh, animals and, and eating they 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 uh, heart, you know. And what was Jacob doing? He was in the tent chilling, chilling like a villain like Bob Dylan on penicillin. You know what I'm saying? And the boys grew, and Esau was a cunning hunter, a man of the field, and Jacob was a plain man dwelling in tents. You see, and Esau loved to hunt. Okay, these Edomites love to hunt. So they're hey, they're basically in their book. They're they're calling, you know, Jake, uh, 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 lazy. You know, you're not enticing the white people. You know, black skin is a curse. Let's read a little bit more. It says, and because of their cursing, which was upon them, they did become an idle people, full of mischief and subtlety, and did seek in the wilderness for beast for beasts of prey. Subtlety. Okay, let's get that. Supplanted. Right, right. The, you know, this Genesis 27 and 36. And he said, is not he rightly named Jacob? So, hey, Esau's complaining. 
Okay, in their in their Book of Mormon, which is you know full of racism, white supremacy, they're complaining about Jake, just like uh, Esau, their forefather, did. And he said, "It is not is not he rightly named Jacob, so like it, for he has supplanted me these two times. He took away my birthright, and behold, now he taken, now he had taken away my blessing." And he said, "Has thou not served reserved a blessing for me?" You see, Esau mad. Okay, it's all in his book. And if you read that book, okay, you know, and, and the spirit ain't with you, man. Hey, you're going to be caught up in that madness, man. Okay, that's white supremacy in the book. Okay, it's a cleverly devised fable. It's the worst supremacy. Strong's H, 6117. Akav. Akav. Okay. To supplant, circumvent, take by the heel, follow at the heel, assail, insidiously overreach. Let's look at this word supplant. To replace, oust, supersede, and replace, supplantar. Okay? To supersede or replace. Okay? So Esau's mad. Okay? That, that Jacob, you know, uh, uh, supersedes them. Okay? And everything. Okay? Scriptures say we are the salt of the earth. Okay? He took away the birthright, and now he had taken away my blessing. Read the story, Christians. You know, why do we got to go into the history? Why don't you read the history? Why don't you piece it together? Read the story. We're Jacob. Okay, you're Esau. And, 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 and you know, your religions are a number of cleverly devised fables, man. That's all they are. Okay, so the Book of Mormon is not for you. Okay, Jake. Hebrew Israelites, the Book of Mormon is not for you. Okay, and I just proved it. This is what they say about you. Let's get some more stuff what they say. Okay, let's get some more stuff. Okay, and then we'll end it out. This is, uh, I don't mean this to be too long, but I just, I, man, I had to do it. I had to do it. This is, uh, what's the name of this article? You can look this up yourself. It, Unexplaining the Mormon priesthood ban on blacks. Okay, look this up. And I want to get something here where it says the war in heaven. The war in heaven. Let's see. Let's read. Okay. Understanding the Mormon doctrine of priesthood, pre existence, and eternal progression is paramount if one is to understand why leaders prior to 1978 felt that those of African heritage should be banned from holding the priesthood. You see, prior to 1978, if you were a so called African, you could not hold the priesthood, which were not Africans. Okay, so you're going off. Okay, we're Hebrew Israelites. Okay, according to the scriptures, according to biblical prophecy, you see, and you try to put that lie in there, that cleverly devised fable that Nephi, okay, sprang all the way back, okay, through Manasseh to Joseph, okay, and, and that's a lie. That's a lie. Okay, we just proved that, man. You see. You know, Jacob was a so-called uh, 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 a dark-skinned man, you see? And Esau was red and hairy, okay? And, and, and y'all are hurt. And y'all uh, concoct these religions and people follow them and put white supremacy in there and, 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 and say all kinds of madness and, and people just eat it up, you see? Listen to this. Early Mormons connected those of African heritage to the biblical Cain, who murdered his brother Abel. Speaking in the Salt Lake Tabernacle in 1859, Brigham, Brigham Young said Cain slew his brother. Cain might have been killed, and that would have put a termination to that line of human beings. This was not to be, and the Lord put a mark upon him, which is the flat nose and black skin. Trace mankind down to after the flood, and then another curse is pronounced upon the same race, that they should be the servant of servants, and they will be until that curse is removed. I say they just lying through their truth, okay? Because Cain is actually their forefather, okay? The so-called white man comes from Esau, who his forefather was Cain, and that curse was was leprosy, okay? You see, Esau means what? It means wasted away. You see, 
because they came out uh, 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 red. They weren't playing like everyone else. Strong's H, 6215. Esav. Esav. Okay. And, and we know this through the Spirit and Power of Yahabashim Yahashai, man. You got your doctrine, we got ours. Okay. Well, let's read this. In his 1954 speech titled Race Problems as They Affect the Church, Mormon Apostle Mark E. Peterson also connected pre-existent performance to a person's mortal status on earth. Okay, so all this happened in, 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 in the war in heaven. Okay, and it explains it right here. Up here. When our Father in heaven chose Jesus, Satan became very angry, persuaded one third of the spirits in heaven to follow him, yada, yada, yada. You know the story. But listen, let's see what they say. In his 1954 speech titled Race Problems as They Affect the Church, Mormon Apostle Marky e. Peterson also connected pre-existence performance to a person's mortal status on earth. We cannot escape the conclusion that because of performance in the pre-existence, some of us are born as Chinese, some as Japanese, some as Indians, some as Negro, some as Americans, some as Latter-day Saints. These are rewards and punishments fully in harmony with his established policy in dealing with sinners and saints, rewarding all according to their deeds. In, this, in that same message, Peterson warned against intermarrying those who were victims of such a curse. He told listeners that his curse, that this curse could be transformed to offspring through interracial marriage. If I were to marry a Negro woman and have children by her, my children would all be cursed as to the priesthood. Do I want my children cursed as to the priesthood? If there is one drop of Negro blood in my children, as I read to you, they receive the curse. There isn't any argument, therefore, as to intermarriage with the Negro is there. Wow. Speaking in General Conference in 1941, Apostle George F. Richards said the Negro race had been forbidden the priesthood and their higher temple blessings, presumably, and the higher temple blessings, presumably because of their not having been valiant while in the spirit. It does not pay to be anything but valiant. Wow. Okay. Really? And y'all the cowards, you see? Cleverly devised fables, Akim. Okay, I just wanted to bring this out. Lord willing, this was edifying. I got one more and I'm going to end it out. It says, for we have not followed cunningly devised fables. Okay, cunningly devised fables. Strong's G, 4679, Safidzo. Safidzo. Right. It says, to invent, play the sophist, to devise cleverly or cunningly. You see? To invent. You see? They invented this all up, man. Let's look at this word cunningly. In a clever cunningly. and deceitful way. Cunningly. In an ingen ingenious way. You see? Th yeah, clever and deceitful. Okay? The story sounds good. It might tickle your ear. Okay, but it's deceitful. It's not true. Okay, and prior to 1978, so-called Negroes, who they call Africans, that's a that's a lie. History itself teaches us that. Okay, that the so-called Negro and Africans are not the same people. You see, we are the children of Israel. We can prove it. Okay, in history, and we can also prove it in the scriptures, man. The God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Okay, and the Holy One of Israel. You see, so. Yeah, it's a deceitful fable, man. And it's clever. It's clever, no doubt. Okay? But that's what Satan does. Okay? You know what I mean? Let's get this word fables. Strong's G, 3454, Muthos. Muthos. Right, a fiction. Fiction means false. Fable, an invention of falsehood. Okay? And see, and that's what Satan does, man. That's what Satan does, man. He can concoct something and make you believe it. Okay? So, and that's what they did. That's what they did, man. We're giving you this book. The, 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 the okie doke. Okay? They pulled the old switcheroo. They took the Bible out of your hand and they gave you the Book of Mormon. And that's what they did. Okay, and they put some white supremacy, they put some lies up in there. Okay, 
They, they made up all these other books, the Pearl of Great Price, the Doctrine and Covenants, okay, you know, so on and so forth. I don't know what other books they have. They have a bunch of books, man, but it's all BS, okay? So, Lord willing, you were edified, okay? Seek out of the book of the Lord and read, okay? The book of the Lord is, is the Bible, okay, and the apocryphal is part of the Bible, Lord willing, you are edified. I want to give all praise, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Bashem Yahushai, Bashem Rokak Wadash, double honors to the apostles, the elders of Great Millstone, the rule well, and a sincere salutation to you, Akim and Yahweh, that believe in all sincerity. Shalom.